So you might be thinking to yourself, why would I need a separate numpad? Well, if you're like me working in IT, this might be the perfect thing for you. This allows you to purchase and collect those 65 and 75% boards without missing out on a numpad. Numpad keyboards are hard to come by and don't usually come in a premium package, except for a few exceptions like the Austin and Windex. This numpad has been a huge helper for me from work from home, and I recommend it for anyone who likes nice boards, but doesn't want to always buy keyboards with numpads due to work. Today we're building the KBD Pad MK2 by KBD Fans. I decided to go with the Gateron Oil Kings since this is a soldered board and I wanted something low effort with an amazing feel and sound profile stock. I use a numpad constantly for work when entering IP addresses and workstation names and didn't want to be limited by keyboards with numpads since there are so many compelling 65% and 75% boards out there. So I wanted something I can use with every board and this seemed like the right way to go. It comes with a braided cable, good quality but I have other plans here soon, its own hex screwdriver, cherry stabs which I'm a huge fan of, plate foam, a PCB that supports both 5 and 3 pin switches south facing, and this model came with a brass plate, though you can get them with aluminum or FR4. And here's the pad. I think it's a work of art. Pretty good profile and solid, which should help with its sound profile. Once getting the back plate unscrewed, it comes in two pieces. The top is where you'd mount the plate and PCB, meaning this is a top plate mounting style. Sorry for the quick color change. Black was blending in with the pad, and I wanted to make sure you could see all the detail. The first thing you want to do is use tweezers to test the PCB to make sure all the sockets work. Once you've got it all tested, you can begin building the stabilizers. We're going to use good old dielectric grease. Wait, why is this all covered in grease? Now that we've cleaned up, we'll take the end of one wire and dip it in the grease. Place a stem inside the stabilizer housing and make sure the side with two holes is facing up where the clip is. Place some of the dielectric grease in the stab at first just to coat it. Then dip it again, just past the angle, and put it in. And clip to one side, then repeat. Wait a sec, these feet aren't clipped. If you look closely, you'll see there are little feet at the bottom. You want to clip off the two that are the thinnest and sitting the highest, like so. And normally I wouldn't recommend eye protection for this, but I almost just lost an eye. Once the stabs are put together, you can slide them both onto your board. These utilize a small hook for one side, then screw in on the bottom. That's where these washers come in handy. You place them on the bottom and then screw them into the PCB. Now we can put on our foam, plate, and switches for the stabilizers to test them out. Everything sounded okay except for one had a slight ping, so I did end up taking it back apart and adding more grease. Now we can place all our switches in. Now I'm not a professional with soldering, but here's a pro tip. I found the oven at the top is a great place to solder. Heat resistant surface, overhead light, What's not to love? During the soldering process, I did run into a slight issue where I bent a pin and therefore missed one of the switches and had to remove the switch to fix it. But otherwise, everything worked out okay. Now the plate and PCB screw into the top mount, then screw the top and the bottom together. Oh, and I did have a little help with the keycaps too. There you have it. This thing has a really nice profile, look and sound. I'm really happy the way this turned out. And I did use some spare keycaps I had lying around. These are actually Echo ASA profile, pink on black, and I'm not the biggest fan, but stay tuned for a future video on that. Drop a comment if you think a numpad is necessary or not. I've heard so many different sides of this, and in my opinion, it depends on what you do for work and if you're even using this for work. I managed to grab mine from Divinity. Now they aren't a sponsor, Please sponsor me. But they do offer free shipping on orders over $100 and they are based out of LA. So shipping only took a couple of days. What a game changer for keyboard enthusiasts. Sorry I made you guys wait so long for the sound test, but without further ado, here we go. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video if you want to see more content from me.